So hi everybody, I am Ricardo Fogliato and I'm a PhD candidate at CMU and today I'm here to talk about Google's first influences of human AI workflows on decision making in clinical imaging. And Shreya? Hi, my name is Shreya Chapiti and I'm a graduating undergrad from the University of Virginia. And this is joint work with uh, Matthew Langren at Stanford, Michael Fitzke, Mark Parkinson at Mass Digital Technologies, Diane Wilson and Paul Fisher from Antec Imaging Services, uh, and Eric Horvitz, Corey Inkman, and Bismila Nushi from Microsoft Research. So RAI is a risk assessment instruments are deployed in many critical, critical domains. And this includes radiology that we will study today, um, CAD scoring, uh, home insurance, uh, uh, hiring, criminal justice, uh, and uh, recommendation systems. And uh, uh, the reason why we deploy risk assessment instruments in the first place uh, is to complement humans. So, so we hope that, that by uh, deploying these tools, uh, we are going to complement the human and increase their diagnostic performance, for example, in case of audiologists, increase the speed of decision making and generally the efficiency of this decision making. And perhaps we can increase uh, uh, all these aspects uh, by deploying one AI that we develop in the, in the vacuum uh, without uh, uh, thinking about the human. But obviously, once we take the human in account, there may be among many AIs some that, that uh, may complement the human in better, better ways. And obviously, we need to take into account human AI workflow configurations, model explanations, uh, how to onboard the practitioners and the experts uh, onto the model, and uh, how to do even model optimization. And our experiment today will focus uh, on human AI workflows. And this is a collaboration between Microsoft Research and a large pet healthcare company, Mass Incorporated. So what do, what do we do in this task? So in this task, we recruited 19 veterinary radiologists that are employed by Mass, and we tasked these radiologists with identifying whether each of 33 pre-specified radiographic findings is present in the X-ray, in X-ray images. And for each of these findings, there was an AI tool here, a convolutional neural network, that was estimating the likelihood that each finding was present in the X-ray. So I said that we are interested in workflow configurations and we studied the impact of workflow configurations on the radiologist's decision-making across multiple aspects. This included the alignment between AI inferences and the radiologist's decision-making, diagnostic performance, confidence in the decisions and time spent on decision-making. And to conduct the experiment, uh, we developed a platform that now has been released as open source. And in this platform, you can see on the left, uh, the radiologists could see the X-ray image. They could interact with the image by zooming in, zooming out, uh, changing brightness, and so on. These are all actions that radiologists do in their daily job. In the middle column, instead, you can see two radiographic findings. Uh, and for each radiographic finding, uh, we ask uh, three uh, different questions. First, what is the likelihood that the condition is present? Second, do, we, do they think that uh, the finding is present in the image? And further, whether were they to encounter this uh, finding in a real world decision making settings, were they to uh, ask for a second opinion of a colleague? And on the right, instead, uh, you can see that there is uh, um, a navigation bar and there was a red triangle next to all the findings uh, for which the AI estimated the likelihood of the condition being present uh, be higher than 60%. So participants could go very quickly through the different findings. So we studied the workflow configurations uh, through a between subject design. Um, and what are these workflows? So the what we call the two-step workflow. Uh, in this workflow, um, participants first observe the X-ray and pre-register the diagnosis. It, the, at this stage, they have not seen the AI output yet. Once uh, um, this, they have done this action, then the AI output is revealed and they, can, are, they are allowed to revise their diagnosis. In the one-step workflow instead, the X-ray and the AI output were shown at the same time. 
So there was no two stage decision, there was just a one step decision. Share. Yeah, so moving on to talk about some of our results. One of our first analyses wanted to examine the alignment between decisions made by the radiologist and decisions offered by the AI. And so what we found is that when the AI recommended a finding as present, which just meant that the estimation likelihood was over 60%, we saw a higher percentage of agreement between the radiologist and the AI in the one-step workflow. So this suggests that there was some anchoring bias by the one-step participants on the AI information that was being presented to them at the same time as the x-ray and the other clinical information. And so when we moved on and wanted to see which findings should radiologists absolutely get right, we wanted to understand that given that we have this one-step participants where um, there was anchoring on the findings that were identified as present, we wanted to see whether participants our participants in the one-step workflow were anchoring uniformly on all types of findings. And so in that vein, we ended up asking the lead radiologist to go through a set of 33 findings and identify which conditions were absolutely critical to get right, which just meant that it was important for the radiologist to either determine that that finding was present and rule it in, or determine that it was absent and rule it out. And so what we saw is that this anchoring bias persisted for the one-step workflow participants, but it was on findings that were marked as non-critical. And so when we separate these findings, we can see that there's around a similar amount of alignment for critical findings between the one and two-step workflow on AI diagnoses when the AI finding is present. But when the finding is non-critical, there's a much higher amount of alignment for the one-step participants compared to the two-step workflows. So this indicates that it's possible that there's a higher reliance on the AI for findings that the radiologists feel are less important to identify and are, you know, expending less mental effort or something in order to identify. And so when we moved on to our next analyses, we also noted that um, while it's important to look at human AI alignment, we're almost never going to have an AI that's 100% accurate. So it's also important to analyze what the influence of AI and workflows are on diagnostic performance of radiologists themselves. So what we noticed is that the AI outperformed the radiologists on all findings and that the one-step workflow participants outperformed the um, two-step workflow participants on all findings as well. And this makes sense in the context of anchoring, right? If we have one-step workflow participants that are anchoring on the AI, if the AI is more accurate, they're going to see a boost in accuracy. We also saw that this founding, uh, finding persisted when we looked at findings that were marked critical, what we talked about in the last slide, and also findings that are marked dangerous to overcall. And these are findings that radiologists should not be marking as present if they are there, as it would be harmful to treat the patient for those conditions. And so when we're thinking about how to evaluate diagnostic performance, it's a complicated in this study by the fact that radiologists here are just making subjective decisions based on their training and what they believe they're seeing in the scan. And so in this study, we ended up creating ground truth by aggregating the opinions of a panel by a dozen radiologists and then using the majority vote as a ground truth decision. So if a majority of the radiologists said that the finding was present, it was marked as present and vice versa. However, this still leaves a room for a high level of disagreement between the panel of radiologists for certain findings. And so we would expect ground truth to be most reliable for findings where we don't need a lot, they say they don't need a lot of second opinions for findings where radiologists believe that the finding is well defined and for findings that are not overlooked because they're too common. And so in these cases where we would expect ground truth to be reliable, we would also expect a low amount of disagreement between all of the radiologists making decisions. And so when we moved on to analyze team accuracy for findings that would have this reliable ground truth or findings where we would expect a low amount of disagreement, we ended up seeing that participants in the one-step workflow were actually anchoring on incorrect AI estimates, even in cases where we were expecting them to be able to make a reliable decision on their own, either because they say they don't need a lot of second opinions or because the finding is well-defined. And so we can see here that anchoring cuts both ways. You can see a boost in accuracy when the AI is performing with high accuracy, but we can also see decreases in team or participant accuracy when they're anchoring on erroneous AI inferences. 
We also try to analyze time as this is an important aspect for um, teleradiologists to be able to conserve during the day. And what we saw is that time spent on diagnoses was similar across workflows. And this is unexpected, right? Because by design, we'd expect workflow two to take longer because here the participants have to look at the information on their own, make a provisional decision, then look at AI information, incorporate that information into their initial framework and make a new decision. And so this is important kind of a finding wise to understand because when we worked with real radiologists and real users, we can see that they ended up compensating for design choices and tried to get things done the way they wanted to. And so in this case, they ended up compensating by not paying much attention to the AI, which is a very important influence or you know, improvement to understand when we're looking at deployment. It's also important to understand more subjective aspects of working with um, human AI teams, right? Because if a human is not interested in working with a tool, we're not going to see the effects of that tool when they're working together. And so in this case, we saw that two-step workflow participants found the task to be more frustrating. They were more likely to agree with statements that the AI tool was demanding and frustrating, which has important implications for adoption. We also saw that two-step workflow participants found the AI help to be less useful as there was a higher amount of disagreement with statements like I would use this tool in my daily job and that the tool increased my confidence, um, speed and accuracy. And so Overall, these findings have really important implications for workflow design. We can see that one-step workflow participants who basically were asked, given AI information at the same time as all of their other information during a decision-making task, were more likely to anchor on AI recommendations and achieve better performance. However, this better performance comes with the caveat that the better performance is coming from the fact that they're working with an AI with a higher accuracy, and that has important implications for what kind of models people are working with, de with during deployment. We also saw that these one-step workflow participants were more likely to agree with each other and more likely to deem the AI help as more useful, which can also have some important implications for tuning trust. So thanks so much for taking the time to listen to our study.